What's up folks? In this part of the introduction to modern web development, we are going to look at Node.js. Node is a JavaScript runtime environment that runs outside of a web browser. So it's server-side JavaScript. It's based on Chrome's V8 JavaScript engine, but they've added all the tooling that's necessary for a server-side scripting environment, like access to local file system that you wouldn't have from within a web browser. Node's event-driven and it's capable of asynchronous I.O., which makes it ideal for solving a lot of the common problems we try to solve with our, our web tooling. It, it, you're also writing JavaScript on both the client and the server, so you have one language spanning your whole stack, which is not nothing. So let's get started. First thing you need to do is install Node. And for Mac and Windows users, you just download the install file and do your thing. It will be in the repositories if you're a Linux user, but beware. If you're not on a current rolling release environment, your node package might be old. There are instructions on node site on how to get a fresher version of node. In particular, I think there's a Debian repo for Ubuntu users. Anyway, install node, and then you should be able to type node dash dash version from a command line and it comes back with anything other than, I don't know what you're talking about, you're good. Now, Node comes in a long-term support release and a current release. I always go current. You can go long-term support. For the kinds of things you're usually doing, it doesn't matter that much. So, that's Node, but most of the time you're not going to be interacting with Node as a web developer. You're going to be interacting with NPM. NPM is the node package manager that comes with a node. If you type npm s version, you'll see what version of npm you have installed and also that all is well with npm. Uh, there are a bazillion packages that npm has. I think it's the largest software repository in the world. And by package, uh, I mean things like Lodash and jQuery and Leaflet and Mapbox GL and Normalize CSS and Bootstrap and Webpack and Brunch and Parcel Bundler and a bazillion other things. Only a tiny portion of the code in a web app you deliver is really code you've written. It's, it's mostly code from other places. NPM is how you manage that. NPM will let you install, manage, remove any of those packages, as well as set up some scripts and stuff to run from within your project. So let's make a folder. And I'm going to initialize git here because I want you to see something a little bit later that is really important when working with uh, node projects or, or projects that include node and git. To initialize uh, npm in this folder, we're going to type npm init, so it's all I get init, only it's a little wordier. It's going to ask you a bunch of questions. You can answer them if you want. I'm just going to hit enter to get through it. And it makes a file called package.json. And let's open up a uh, code editor. And this is what package.json looks like. It's uh, like this. It's JSON. If you've ever seen JSON in JavaScript, it's basically what it is. It has the answer to some of those questions you are asked. This is where it's going to store information about the packages you have installed. So let's make an index.js. As this is Node, we're running JavaScript. We'll go console.log hello world. Now we can type node and index.js, and you see on our command line we get hello world. Node is up and running. We just ran server-side JavaScript. Aren't we awesome? That's boring. Let's install some packages. You install packages with npm install, and then the name of the package. We're going to install .env, which reads env environmental files. And let's also install lodash. And when you install things, they can go in one of two places, in your package.json, in your regular dependencies, or your development dependencies. 
It really doesn't matter practically, it's just a kind of a neatness and organization thing. Regular dependencies are things that will ship with your product, like say jQuery. Uh, development dependencies are things that are used in the process of making your product, like say Webpack, where it doesn't actually ship down with your what you're doing. We're going to do regular dependencies. We're going to go dash dash save. If it's development dependencies, you go dash dash save dash dev. And there are shortcuts for these commands, but uh, no sense in confusing anybody at this point. Package.json, you see we got .env, .low dash in a particular version. This is important. And it adds this package.log.json to help along with that. Uh, you, what you don't want to do is say, my project uses Lodash. And then two years later, somebody gets your project and installs Lodash, and it's a much newer version of Lodash, and they had a bunch of breaking changes, and your project doesn't run anymore. So this locks your project to particular versions of their dependencies. And that kind of future proofs uh, and makes more portable the project itself. So we got two projects now. Let's make a .env file. To hold some environmental variables, we'll go my message equals hello universe. And then index.js, if I can remember how to, I think it's require.env config and It'll be process.env.myMessage. Did I get all that right in one go? Hey! <laughs> ah, smartest person in the room right now. Um, to use packages, what you do in Node is you do to bring a package into a particular piece of JavaScript like this index.js, you'll do a require. If you want to export JavaScript out of, say, a module, you do an export. And we're just going to do it with imports here because that's all really, really need for this course. When you require something and it's not assigned to a variable, that is basically just sucking that whole bit of JavaScript into index.js. What we're going to do with lodash is a little different. We're going to do const, and you could use var here, const underscore, which is a tr traditional thing you bind lodash to, equals require lodash. Now we should be able to do lodashy type things now with that underscore. I don't know, but um, let's go look up some Lodashy things. I haven't used Lodash in so long. I can't remember what I'm doing. Let's go with this, whatever the hell that does. Should spit out an A1 and a B2. And most importantly, not a screaming error message. All right. Try this out. We got hello universe, we got where A1 and B2. That this defaults must be a like a, a reduce that looks for duplicates as you go left to right and throws out the duplicates on the right. I think. There you go. We've included two packages and uh, installed them. It fetched them. We included them. We're running them. We're off for the races here with Node. Uh, two more things I want to show you. One is this script section. This is where you can put code you want to run through NPM. Like we can go uh, go index, or whatever you want to call it. We can go node index.js. So now we can, from the command line run, NPM run go index. It's essentially going to run that node index for us, which is not super useful in this case, but it's where you can put scripts to do all kinds of different things. There are some special reserve words or script names you can use like start, or I think there's one that's something like pre-build to do stuff before. There's some different reserved ones, but uh, that's where you can put in scripts. 
And the other thing I want to show you, if you're using Node with uh, in a Git repo, when Node installs its stuff, it puts this, it creates and puts it in this Node modules folder. And that folder can get monstrous, like tens of thousands of files. You do not want to track that crap in your Git repo. And right now, see this node modules folder, it's something that might get tracked in this Git repo. So Git has a special file you can put in the root called .gitignore. And it is what it sounds like. It's basically just things you can tell Git to ignore. So now when we go Git status, you know, the node modules isn't in there anymore. And this is perfect. Somebody could clone this project and then just run npm install and it'll get all the stuff. Because once you have this package out, Jason, we could just toss out node modules. Now none of those modules are installed here anymore. But since we have package.json, did I just say JSON? That was weird. Package.json, we just go npm install and it will look in your package.json for all the stuff there and install it for you. And now it rebuild the node modules. Now we can go run that again and it runs fine because our, our project dependencies are back and installed again. NPM does some caching, which is why that appeared to happen almost instantly there. So that is the basics of node and NPM and Node is the thing that is going to run most of our tasks and stuff. And there are a lot of tasks and stuff we need to run as a web developer. You've got to, you may want to use some ES 2016. So you got to do some transpilation from that. You might need to process your view or react. You might want to do some post CSS or some SAS. You might want to do some automated progressive web app stuff, all kinds of stuff. And Node, along with some packages, is going to handle that for us. All right. See you next time.